Israel launching phase two of its war against Hamas, striking over 450 targets over the weekend. With the U.S. now warning of heightened risk of spillover in the Middle East region, we want to bring in Admiral James Stavridis. He is the former Supreme Allied Commander of NATO. He's also the chief international analyst for NBC News and MSNBC. And Admiral, let's uh, kind of dig through what this next phase means. I, I heard an Israeli minister speaking earlier today uh, saying that they don't want to occupy Gaza for the long term. That is not their plan, not their intention. But obviously, that, that uh, kind of brings the supposition that they are planning some sort of an occupation. Is that your understanding of what the next phase is? Yeah, I think it's become clear, Becky, what the general game plan is. Two weeks ago, you could have postulated this would be a shock and awe kind of campaign, just massive troops pouring in there, really trying to overrun it and subdue it instantly. That's not the plan. What I think we're going to see here is more methodical, more measured. You're going to see precision-guided airstrikes continue, gradual incursions around the north and the east of Gaza. And then I think you're going to see them cut across to isolate Gaza City and then slowly squeeze into it. So this is looking like a more methodical take your time kind of campaign, and there's a one-word answer to why, and it's hostages. So the Israelis will do everything they can to move slowly, try and find the hostages, and perhaps rescue them. Tough military mission. This is going to take a while, Becky. The longer this goes on, uh, the more pushback there is uh, on yeah. those who say you need to use caution with the civilian uh, population that's here. I heard uh, Kamala Harris last night on 60 Minutes saying that the United States is not going to get involved in this, but our presence of the, you know, the USS Gerald Ford says otherwise. That's our largest carrier. It's there with an entire strike group. What does that mean if this expands? It's not just the Ford, by the way. The USS Dwight Eisenhower is going into the region. There are 2,000 Marines embarked on USS Bataan, which is almost the size of those big nuclear carriers. There are a dozen ships and more with strike missiles, air defense systems. So this is a formidable naval force. And we put in additional Air Force strike squadrons into bases in the Middle East. And we've got more troops on prepare to deploy order. So uh, it, we are right to be concerned. And this morning, we're hearing the U.S. government saying the chances of this widening implication, U.S. potentially involved if Iran comes in via Hezbollah in the north, the potential for that is rising. Becky, uh, two weeks ago, I would have said 10 percent chance that this thing is going to widen. This morning, I'm feeling more 20 percent chance. Um, I think the situation is growing more dangerous, not less. What does a widening look like? Does that happen slowly? Does that happen quickly? And are we talking about our troops skirmishing with Hezbollah? Or are we talking about us and Iran? The first thing to watch, and as investors, watch the north. Watch Hezbollah. Watch what's happening on the northern border. Thus far, it's been skirmishing, some shots back and forth, not a lot of activity up there. If Iran decides to truly engage in this conflict, they will unleash Hezbollah, which has north of 120,000 surface-to-surface missiles. Those come flying south. At that point, the widening, I think, would be the U.S. engaging on behalf of Israel against Hezbollah, Iranian proxy in Lebanon. Then Iran might respond. They've already launched strikes at some of our troops in the area. You see that ladder of ver vertical escalation going up. Um, concerning, again, 20 percent chance. That's uncomfortably high right now. Um, that's why the administration has those forces there to conclude, Becky, in order to send a signal to Iran, we will engage if you do. Let's hope the Iranians are listening.